So the last time I paid attention to this really was back in the days of Department of Labor and the fiduciary rule, just a couple of years ago. Right. And they put forward a rule that got pulled back ultimately when the Trump administration came in. How is what the SEC proposing different from what Labor did? Well, in some ways, it's in some ways it's effectively the same, but in other more important ways, it, it is different. And the first thing to remember is that the SEC actually started down this road long before the long before the Department of Labor. But the, probably the most important difference is the SEC proposal applies to all invest all retail investment accounts, whereas the Department of Labor rule only applied to retirement accounts, qualified retirement accounts. So this is a this has a broader scope than the Department of Labor rule. The second thing is that this rule effectively accomplishes what the Department of Labor tried to do by saying that brokers must put their clients' interest ahead of their own, a, a, a so-called best interest. Uh, but it does so in a way that is conducive to the brokerage model. And that's what, the SEC, that's what the SEC tried to accomplish. And frankly, that's what Congress intended uh, in, in Section 913 of the Dodd-Frank Act 10 years ago when they authorized the SEC to take such action if they, if they decided that they needed to do it. So this has been a long time coming. But what this ends up with is a materially higher standard for brokers, s s fairly pretty much equivalent to that that investment advisors are subject to under the Advisors Act. And one last thing I point out that's important is most, most financial advisors uh, in the United States are dual-hatted, which means most provide both investment advisory services and brokerage services. The client picks and chooses what's appropriate for them, how they want to pay, if they want to pay as they go, if they want to have their money managed on a continued basis. Often many clients have both. And, and, but this is really not only a, a greater protection for the investor, but also protects the investor's choice of how they want, what, what service they want to buy. So my recollection was there's a fair amount of resistance within the industry to the Department of Labor fiduciary standard, uh, particularly on the part of smaller brokerages. Uh, where is the industry on this proposal from the SEC? Well, we believe that this, the SEC proposal is, is in the right direction. We think in, generally it is, it is a good proposal. It, it definitely raises the bar, which we believe needs to do. We think most brokers already meet this bar as it is uh, effectively. Uh, we think there's some changes that need to be made to make it consistent with other, uh, other standards under the Exchange Act, other standards that brokers are subject to under FINRA regulation, uh, which by the way, brokers are, are you know, examined and regulated in a much higher capacity than investment advisors are. And then there needs to be, they need to look how it works for dual-hatted brokers, so who are both investment advisors and, and brokers. So we think there's some modifications that need to be made. But on the whole, we think this is a very good proposal that will, will, can get done and will be to the benefit of investors because they will be, they will hold brokers to a higher standard, but the investors will still not be limited in their choice of whether they want a, a commission-based product or a managed product. The SEC chairman, Clayton, has made this something of a priority, it appear. Right. Why is that? I mean, it's not particularly in his background for his practice here in, in New York. Well, you know, he came into office. You're absolutely right about that. He, he, was, he was more on the institutional side, transactional right. side. But he came into office talking about wanting to close the loop on this once and for all. And he talks a lot about Mr. and Mrs. 401k in his public comments. And I think he very sincerely believes that it, we need to, we, we really need to finish this discussion, get to a place where we ought to be. And the fact of the matter is actually, in, in, in many cases, uh, brokers under arbitration, because brokers are subject to a private right of action where investment advisors are not always, uh, are often held to uh, a fiduciary standard, which is really a court precedent. Uh, I think Mr. Clayton is saying, let's just get to where we already are today for most of the market, but let's make sure we pull the others up to it. Well, that's a couple of times you said that, that not that much will really change as a practical matter for most brokers. If that's true, why is it important to do it? If people are really complying with this already, then why do we need a rule to make sure that? Because we need to make sure that the, the investor understands what the duty is that's owed to them. And we, need to, and we need to also have clarity in what the rules are going to be uh, so that brokers understand what the rules are they have to operate under. So most brokers believe that they already put their clients' interests first. They feel they operate that way. They feel they're held to that standard uh, by FINRA. Let's just have the rules catch up with where they are today. But in a second, but, but equally important is we believe, we believe this for 10 years. 
longer than 10 years, that we ought to upgrade the standard hmm. to make it a best interest standard. And so let's just finish this discussion once for all, and let's do it for all, all retail accounts, not just some retail accounts. When Mr. Perez was Secretary of Labor and he was promulgating this rule, he had these horrible stories that he tried out with, with retirees who really lost their wealth because of uh, abuse, as he said it. Uh, was he right about that? Is there abuse? Uh, is, there, is there a need to try to weed that out, and would this accomplish that? First of all, no one likes to see abuse, and 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 we believe there are you know redress under the under the uh, for brokers under the Federal Arbitration System. A lot of times, you don't see the end of that story, but we think that this rule would help weed out bad actors. We should always be looking to do that. We think the vast majority of the industry operates in a very a very best interest standard today, but we think the rules should be clear as to what you should do, and and the, and the regulators should have the tools to weed out the bad actors.